Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book haul video. Okay, and this is a special comic book haul. Uh, I guess we could categorize that as a special comic book haul because this is going to be the video um, that we're putting out for our 700th live video that we have online, right? So this is sort of an anniversary video, right? Since uh, I guess I started loading up on video, loading videos on YouTube specifically and Vimeo and Daily Motion at the time as well, uh, about 12 years ago, right? 2007 or so, and we're in 2018. So after 1200, uh, 12 years, we've reached 700 vi 700 videos, right? So for this anniversary video, we're going to go through a comic book haul, and this comic book haul is basically comic books that i've bought acquired over the last two months from a local seller that was selling online okay that way uh, i didn't i'm mainly specifically lo buying locally right now because i'm on a comic book budget so i sort of decreased my pull list at the uh, local comic book store and i'm just mainly getting things that i've been collecting for a long time and some random stuff and online i've sort of just buying from a local seller and sometimes from sellers that are uh, not in my local vicinity and I just ask them to hold uh, the comic books we've been buying for a month or two months and then ship them all together right that way we can distribute the shipping costs and we've gone through some of those right but this one is uh, from a local seller that I've been going and getting the comics for the last couple of months and there's only 39 books here okay there's some amazing deals some bottom feeder, bottom feeder stuff that i was able to get my hands on for nothing right there's some stuff here that uh, i really wanted to get to fill the collection and there's some stuff here that i actively sort of try to collect if i can get it at a good deal right if i can lowball the bids and i end up winning by fluke or there's no other bidders on there right so let's go through this thing and uh, just to let you know 39 bucks okay these 39 bucks they cost a uh, hundred dollars us approximately hundred dollars us plus or minus a dollar right so hundred dollars us for 39 bucks so it ended up costing me about 250 us a pop per unit because we've been keeping track all the previous comic book hauls we've been doing we've been doing a lot of per unit pricing right so these book cost 250 per unit okay one of the books was about 30 percent of the whole buy it's something that i really wanted in my collection right so one of the books was 28 dollars okay so if you take out that book we ended up getting 38 books for 70 dollars us which kicks it down to like dollar 90 dollar dollar 85 or so i sort of ran the number dollar 85 or so us per book right if you exclude the one that was like 30 percent of the cost of this whole haul okay so let's go through this and as you know i sort of do research when i see comic books when i'm you know i'm going to be placing a bid and stuff i sort of do a little bit of preliminary preliminary research if i don't know too much about the specific comic uh, and if i know about the comic i i pretty much know where the price range should be or what price range i would like to get it at right and uh when i end up shooting any comic book haul videos i do a little bit of extra research uh, just for my own satisfaction because i go through these right and uh, just looking at them and just uh, just looking up the artists and stuff like this so i do a little bit of more research so this is what i've collected here right and uh, for this haul let's start off with uh, books that i tried to get in my collection i'm trying to complete the series uh, and this is a sought after series for sure and it's jack kirby uh mr miracle okay and it's related to the fourth world that he created um and we're going to be doing in comic book hall uh in comic book reading set number four that we started like two years ago a year and a half ago that we've been slowly going through right we're going to read uh, i believe we're going to read new gods number one right so this is mr miracle it's in the same world as new gods and um 
uh, new gods and forever people, right? We might be reading forever people. Uh, so I'm not sure which one we decided to read. I got to check my notes, right? So I ended up grabbing four Mr. C Mr. Miracle comic books. And the seller actually had the whole series from number one. Was, it, was number one there? Number one was there as well. Number one all the way up to 17, okay? And out of that, I ended up getting four of them. So let me tell you what I ended up picking up. This one, and what grade they were. Oh, I didn't write the grade for these ones. Um, the Mr. Miracles were all in very fine plus, okay? So these ones, except for the last, uh, this one, um, I forgot to write down the grade for this one. This is the only one I didn't write down the grade for. I don't know why. Um, but I'll tell you what the grades are as we're going through them. Okay. Oh, this is the reason. I put them at the back of the book, right? So when I do my hauls, right? Sometimes when I get the hauls and the comic book hauls or when I buy them, buy them in a store or whatnot, if I'm putting them board them back, I do put the grades on these books. Okay. So this is Mr. Miracle number 17 graded at very fine and what i ended up paying for this and this one came out and again it's uh, the for this the the script the pencils and the cover are by jack kirby and the inks is by mike moyer okay i had to write all this stuff down there's so many names to keep track of right so this is mr miracle number 17 from 1974 and i ended up paying four dollars and 48 cents us and very fine grade okay let's put this guy here let's make a little room let's put this guy here the next one was mr miracle number 15 and again graded at very fine so i'm just going to read off the grade uh, of what i put behind the things so it's graded and very fine and again all of these the script uh, the writing and the pencils is by Jack Kirby and the inks is by Moyer, uh, Mike Moyer, Royer. Okay, so this is Mr. Miracle number 15. And I ended up paying 466 US for this. This is a beautiful cover, really. As are almost every cover that Jack Kirby has, uh, has put out. I really like this cover, really beautiful. Beautiful. Should we take a closer look at number 17 too? Let me show you number 17 as well, right? Close up. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. And these uh, were a pretty good price, what I got them for. And Mr. Miracle number 14, 1973, graded at very fine minus. And this one I ended up paying 521 US. Beautiful. I actually don't have Mr. Miracle number one. I think I have number two. I have some randoms. I don't have the complete set. Here's Mr. Miracle number five. This one is graded at very good plus. <laughs> very good plus. <laughs> fix up the back of this. Very good plus. Okay. And uh, this one cost uh, is from 1971, and I ended up paying uh, 637 US for this. And it was 856 Canadian. I have the Canadian and US prices written, but I'm just going to read off the US prices for now beautiful what does it say enjoy your trip on dr van bar's murder machine nice nice and uh, one note i made i didn't know this when i bought this uh oh that's number 17 let me grab you number let's grab number 15. number 15 is the first appearance of Sheila norman okay and Sheila Norman, I wrote on the, I don't remember this at all. I've read some of this, not all of it. So I'm not familiar with uh, Mr. Miracle as, uh, 
as much as I like to be <laughs> telling the truth. <laughs> but at some point, I will definitely read the whole series, right? Um, and Shiloh Norman uh, from Wiki, I believe, this said a young sidekick to Mr. Miracle. And from my comic shop, I believe, this said the info was it's the third person to use the name Mr. Miracle. And I didn't know this, right? So it's the first appearance of Shiloh Norman. Okay. I don't know if that's the guy or not. I'm not familiar. <laughs> Very familiar with this. Right. One day, one day I'm going to sit down and read uh, all the fourth world in one shot and just consume that. Maybe we do it this summer. I don't know. Well, we've got a fair bit of reading to do. Okay. Let's kick it up to the 1960s. Okay, check this out. Check this out. And uh, again, the person, uh, it was a local seller. All of this was local seller. This one, he put it up and it was, he put out the complete series for this and I was only able to grab three of them, which I was, you know, I was on budget. Someone kicked up one of them fairly high. Okay, and this is here. Let me show it to you in order. Let's go from here to here. This is the comic book series called The Invaders, right? We ended up getting three of them. Okay, now this comic book series is uh, this uh, TV series. Okay, this is a comic book series based on a TV series. This TV series is absolutely phenomenal. I saw a few episodes when I was younger. Okay, I haven't seen The Invaders for 30 years or so, or 25 to 30 years or so. So in my early childhood to the early teens, they were showing reruns on TV and stuff, and I saw a few episodes. And this story, the story of Invaders, is basically a person that finds out that there's an alien invasion on Earth, and he tries to warn people, right? So this is... You know, I looked this up again. I found a comment somewhere saying that this is like a decade or two, couple of two, three decades before the X Files, right? So this is the precursor to X Files, and the TV series, from what I remember, was really good. And uh, I read the reviews online, and people, it sounds like it's held up uh, through time because it's got a pretty high rating. Uh, people talking about it. And I read some of the reviews and stuff, so. I've got access to it and <laughs> I'm gonna watch a few episodes. Maybe I'll give you guys a review if I end up marathoning the thing, right? So this is Invaders number two. Okay. Graded at very good plus. Okay. And the, the, the TV series for this came out in 1967 and it had 43 episodes okay the final episode was 68 so they put out 43 episodes i guess it ran for two seasons right so this is invaders number two great it's very good and we ended up paying <laughs> now he had number one and i had bid on number one i had bid reasonably you know a good deal but fair value but a good deal very good deal and i got outbid on that right i can't remember what it went for okay I, it was it was ten dollars or around there right this is invaders number two i picked it up for 25 cents canadian graded very good plus and that ends up being 19 cents us okay i was like man the guy outbid me on invaders number one it was very, and he let me have this one for 25 cents which was i guess he blew his budget on the number one so he must have been on a lower budget than i was maybe right this is invaders number three graded at very good okay and we ended up paying two dollars and five cents us for this happy to have this happy to have this and as you guessed it i i believe there's only four issues in the whole series right in the first series that came out and this is the first series that came out and this is from gold key 
1967. And this is Invaders number four. Graded at very good. And we ended up paying $1.86 for this. Very happy to have this. Very happy to have this. Okay. And the main actors on the photo covers on these things. Okay. Um, the story. Now I should tell you the the story for this for the for the invaders is written uh, by Paul Newman and the art is by Dan Siegel okay and Paul Newman I'm not familiar with Dan Siegel I believe I've seen his artwork before for gold key stuff but Paul Newman other than the actor doesn't ring a bell with me okay and I got a little quote from wiki here it says the invaders is an American science fiction television program created by Larry Cohen that aired on ABC for two seasons from 1967 to 1968. Roe Thine stars as David Vincent, who tries to thwart an in-progress alien invasion with doubling uh, doubting officials and public. The series was a Quinn, Quinn Martin production. Okay, and the photo covers here, I believe I looked this up, but I this is the main actor i believe okay roy fines i'll know more after i start watching a few episodes let's do a one one comic where is this let me show you this guy this guy I was super happy to get <laughs> especially for the price we got it this is dinosaurus nice from dell four color okay so this is Dinosaurus, uh, Dell Comics, four color, 1120, okay, uh, 1120, number 1120. It came out in August 1960, and it's based on a movie that came out. And I didn't know this, uh, uh, the movie part of it. I knew about this comic book. I've seen it. I might have one or two issues of, uh, or this issue i don't know i have dinosaur i like dinosaur comics right so i think i might have this but i'm not 100 percent sure right but we were bottom feeding off the off the auctions right so we bit something because we didn't know right we're not getting this for 19 cents us <laughs> bagged and boarded 25 cents canadian okay and it's a painted cover i couldn't figure out so i couldn't find out who the painted cover is by and it's beautiful very beautiful painted cover right and the script is by Eric uh, Fryward and Robert Schaefer. And the artwork and the letters is Jesse Marsh did the artwork for this. Okay. And I'm going to read you what the wiki description for this is uh, while, you, while you take a look at the, the cover. I didn't know this was the story of Dinosaurus. A Dinosaurus is a 1960s science fiction film directed by Irvin Yoworth and produced by Jack H. Harris. The leading role, right? This was cool to me. The reading, leading role was intended for Steve McQueen, right? Who starred in The Blob two years earlier, also produced by Harris and directed by Yeworth. But for, for reasons not clear, the offer was never made to McQueen. And Steve McQueen is phenomenal. And the story for this is pretty cool for the dinosaur. It's, um, I didn't write it down, I read it. It's basically these two dinosaurs, um, scientists find them frozen, I believe. And then when they thaw, lightning brings them back to life. Right? So they start wreaking havoc. And there's an ice, there's a caveman that's also brought back to life by lightning and stuff like this. Right, so it's pretty cool. And Steve McQueen, man, Steve McQueen is a phenomenal actor. He was one of the great actors on the same level as James James Dean, right? Steve McQueen, and he did a classic movie called The Blob, where this blob alien, I believe there's different adaptations. The original adaptation is it's an alien that lands in the city and it starts eating people up, <laughs> attaching to them. And basically like a slug starts... Uh, digesting them and gets bigger and bigger right so that's one of Steve McQueen's original first roles so that was awesome movies great 
sci-fi movie, B sci-fi movie from that period. And then Steve McQueen graduated to more and more brilliant roles, right? Uh, Bullet is one of them. Uh, and there's a whole bunch. Like, uh, what's the one uh, uh, where he's on an island with Dustin Hoffman, where they're sent there for life as a French island prison and they try to escape that's a brilliant movie really brilliant movie brilliant movie okay let me show you these ones oh my oh my oh my oh my let me show you these ones okay nice now this person had the full set of this available i was able to get before I tell you, tell you what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the books. Ten out of um, ten out of twelve that he had up, right? And let me put this in order. Let me put this in order. I'll show you the most expensive one, and this is the one that was. Uh, uh 30 percent of the cost of this all right and the reason i got this well obviously the reason i got it is because uh i don't have it in my collection right and it fills uh a collection that we have okay and it's related to let me put this down so we don't drop things okay and it's related to uh, the, again comic book haul set number four that we're going to do and it's one of the comic books that we've planned on reading okay and it's the first appearance of jonah hex from all-star western number 10 right and the seller had all-star western number 10 up all-star western number 11 up jonah hex number one all the way up to number 10. okay i bid for Jonah Hex number or All Star Western number ten, the copy that we that I have that we're gonna read is a low grade copy. It's a good good minus good good grade, right? We're gonna read it for sure. First appearance of Jonah Hex, the grade that he had up was higher grade, but it was above my budget, <laughs> right? However, I know that I don't have All Star Western number eleven in my collection, and we ended up getting All Star Western number eleven. And this is a first full cover of Jonah Hex. Beautiful cover. And I read somewhere the artist, I'll read you the artist, but I read some notes saying that he got some help, the artist, from other artists for this cover. Like, really, this is a phenomenal, what an amazing cover. Beautiful, beautiful. Like, phenomenal. Look at that. Look at that very happy to have this in my collection okay very yeah very happy to have this in my collection so this is all-star western number 11 second appearance of jonah hex came out in may april may 1972 okay we ended up paying 28 dollars and 21 cents us for this okay it was 37.89 canadian okay the cover is by tony the Zunga, the the Zuniga, Tony the Zuniga, and some notes were saying here might have got help from other artists. We don't know who the artists are. Okay, let me read you who's in this. Who does some of the work in this? Right, the artists and stuff. Uh, this is giant size issue. Uh, second, the his second appearance of Jonah Hex. Then the story is called the Hundred Dollar Deal. Script is by john albano okay and the art art is by tony de zunga okay and da, 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 da. and the second story for this is check this out this one here right i didn't know this one el el diablo right so jonah hex appears in this in one story this is el diablo in another story okay so el diablo uh El Diablo, the writing for this is El Diablo stars in Satan's Sanctuary, script by Sergio Aragones. I didn't know he did the script for this. And Lee Wynn 
which is huge as well. And the art is by uh, Gray Morrow. Okay. And it's got a reprint of a, a script by Garden Fox and Carmen Infantino, right? And we've looked at Carmen Infantino before. And we've probably read Carmen Infantino's artwork and stuff. And uh, Batlash, and again, another backup story, uh, backup cover by Sergio Aragonis and uh, Denny O'Neill, and art by Nick Candy. Okay, cool. Happy to have this. This was the main gist of our buy, the cost, right? And then we got the rest. Now, we didn't get uh, all Western, all Star Western number 10. I already have it in my collection. That's okay. I tried to get all uh, Jonah Hex and then all Star Western number 10 or also um, Jonah Hex. His those are all Star Western number 10 and number 11 are his first two appearances. After that, he went into weird Western tales. So there was a series where they featured Jonah Hex and weird, weird Western tales. And I might have a couple issues kicking around in that. I don't think so. Okay, so I still need to collect those. I like Jonah X, right? And then he went into his own series where it was called Jonah X. And he had, the seller had Jonah X available as well, but that went above my budget as well. And I don't have that one at some point. I'll, I'll try to get my hands on it, okay? But here's what we ended up picking up. And I'll tell you the prices and the grades. Okay, this is Jonah X number two, graded at fine. And it came out in 1977. We picked this up, and uh, the artist, the the artist and stuff switch around a little bit, okay. But uh, I gotta read the artist for this because there's artists and cover. One cover for this is uh, main, like sought after as well. So I'm gonna read you these guys. So this is written by Michael Flesher, with art art and cover by. Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Okay. And we ended up paying 25 cents Canadian, 19 cents US for this. And it's a beautiful cover. Look at that. Beautiful. 19 cents US. I guess people blew their budgets on All Star Western number 10 and Jonah X number 1. Happy to have this. Very happy to have this. Jonah Hex, number three. My intros to these buys are crazy. Jonah Hex, number three. And again, it's written by Michael Flesher, and the art is by, by Jose Luis Garcia. 1977, right? 19 cents US. Fantastic, fantastic. Wanted for murder, dead or alive. Jonah Hex, $10,000 rewards. Jonah Hex, number four. Number four, graded at fine. 1977, again, Michael Flesher and Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. 19 cents US, 19 cents US. Welcome to Paradise Hex and Die. <laughs> Jonah Hex number five. Right. Written by John Albano, right? And John Albano was one of the creators of Jonah Hex, I believe. Should be. Artwork by Tony Dezunga, covered by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. 25 cents US. 25 cents US. 25 cents US. Awesome. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. 
Jonah hex number six, graded at five. Written by Michael Flesher, artwork by Ernie Chan, Ernie Chan, and Nolly Pala Palagan, cover by Ernie Chan. And if you know my comic book videos, if you know about some of the artists that I really love, Ernie Chan is one of them. And I got turned on to him through the Savage Sword of Conan that we've talked about. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we ended up paying 25 cents US for this. 25 cents US. Nice. Look at that. Jonah X. Reach over the key. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. They're cuffed together. Forget the blasted key hex. Or I'll plug you. Look at the horse in the background. Beautiful. Beautiful. Jonah Hex number seven. Right. Written by Michael Flesher with art by Ernie Chan and Noli Pala Palagan and cover by Ernie Chan. Right. We ended up getting this for 25 or 25 cents Canadian, 19 cents US. This is, this is so Conan-ish, right? Really. Jonah Hex, number eight. Written by Michael Flesher, artwork by Ernie Chan and Vince Vicente Alizar. And cover by Ernie Chan. This is beautiful. detail on the background beautiful cover <laughs> is there any Jonah Hex bands out there do you think I got the next one for 25 cents <laughs> Jonah Hex number nine Written by Michael Flesher, art by Ernie Chan and Danny Bulan. Bulan Nadi. Okay. Cover by Cover by Wrightson. Cover by. this came out sorry if i'm moving it over <laughs> this came out in that that what's the date on this 1978 okay we didn't pay 25 cents for this we paid seven dollars and 20 cents for this and it's graded the grade very fine plus fantastic let me bring it closer. Let me bring this closer. This is like it 
Italian Western lighting and shadows and, and it's right son. in my collection I no, I do very fine plus the great on it is phenomenal right squawk John X John X squawk slow death slow death nice 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 very happy to have this and at a great price right and Jonah Hex number 10. <laughs> Throw the dynamite X or they'll kill us all. Art, uh, again, written by Michael Flesher. Art by Lu Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Cover by Gary Morrow. And we paid 20, uh, 19 cents US to this for this. 25 cents Canadian. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Very nice. Very happy to have John X. Let me show you this. These ones I didn't know about. Okay. I didn't know about this comic book series or this creator. Um, but if you guys follow uh, indies, if there's any indie comic book lovers out there, uh, you might appreciate this. Okay. We got, let me show you this, and I'll read you what this is. This is Soft Boy number one. We got four Soft Boys. Let me push it up so. My fingers won't cover. <laughs> Soft boy number one. Okay. Graded in near mint condition, right? Near mint. This came out in 1997 and its first edition, uh, drawn in quarterly, ended up paying $4.84 US. And this is written by, written, drawn, colored, everything by Archer Pru, Prewitt, Prewitt, Archer Prewitt. And I didn't know about Archer Prewitt, but this is what Wiki says about the creator for this comic book, right? Archer Prewitt is an American musician and cartoonist associated with the independent music scene in Chicago, Illinois. In addition to his music, Pruitt is a freelance illustrator, cartoonist, and comic book colorist. His first professional illustrations were for the Kansas City Star while he still lived there. In 1992, he started drawing and self-publishing his soft boy mini comic while also working as a cartoonist for Marvel Comics. Soft boy has subsequently been published in Kitchen Sink Press, Fantagraphics, um, Da, 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 da. This one I wanted to read for you. Uh, he also created Funny Bunny, I guess. And I don't know what Funny Bunny is. Uh, but also, Pruitt was nominated for 1997 Eisner Award for Best Colorist for Soft Boy and Friends. Right? And this is the one he got uh, award, the Eisner Award. And he's, he's a big deal, I guess. And the only reason I looked... Uh, uh, I looked into this a little bit when it was came up. It looked cool. I know I don't have this. And if I could get it a good deal, I, and this is a phenomenal deal, <laughs> by the way. So it was a really good deal. Everything else I was checking was going for way higher. Okay. And this is one of the few comic books ever. This haul, and I'll show you the other three. 
uh, one of the few comic book calls that I've picked up from the seller where he turns to me and says, wow, you got a great deal. These go for like $80 or something. I, I think they go for less, but he's he loves his indie comics. So there's indie comic book collectors. There's a lot of respect for indie comics, right? And they cherish their indie comics, as do I. Like a lot of my indie comics, I will never sell. Right? <laughs> well, I might sell other things. So because they're much harder to get hold of, especially in mint condition. And this is near mint condition, right? So that's a great price great price so that's soft boy number two he had soft boy number uh, that's soft boy number one my apologies soft boy number one 1997 he had soft boy number two up as well i got out bit burned <laughs> i got out bit. <laughs> i i was on budget man i couldn't bid high enough right if i had unlimited funds or more funds than i did i would have grabbed number two as well right but number two went above my budget, maxed it out, right? I was able to grab number three. And this cover is beautiful, okay? And number three came out in 2004, right? This one came out in 2004. Again, near mint condition, okay? Hard to come by. Drawn quarterly, picked this up for 19 cents US, 25 cents Canadian. The seller was like, what? <laughs> awesome. Look at the cover. Beautiful cover. I read a couple of pages of this just online that I found. I don't know um, anything beyond this, what I'm sharing with you, really. But it looks good. It reminds me like this uh, Will Eisner, sort of it's got a Will Eisner feel to me, right? Uh, the people, not soft boy, but the the what do you call it the raggedy people with the rats but more of a cartoonish feel to it there he would couldn't believe i got it for 19 cents <laughs> he was like what <laughs> he had soft boy sort of uh, and friends a combo and this is uh it's number number zero i guess right and it's got it's a reprint of number one that I showed you and number two. So I do have the number two story. So if I want to read this, I have the full story that I can read, which is fantastic, right? So this is Soft Boy, um, Econo Cabo. It's number zero, near mint condition, okay? Um, came out in 2000, drawn quarterly, and I paid $1.68 US for this, right? Reprints both issue of Soft Boy and Friends from 1997. Written illust and illustrated by Archer Pruitt. Fantastic. $1.68 US, right? And it's a thicker piece because it's got both issues. Fantastic. Near mint condition. Very happy, very happy. And check this out. <laughs> I sugar this. It's a mini comic. It's his mini comic from first soft boy that he put out from 1993 and uh, near mint condition first edition 19 cents us so i guess number one would have been his first appearance i don't know too much about this i couldn't find too much uh, but happy to have not only including these comic books in my collection but also the information uh, of these comic books because I didn't know I thought that was cool nice deals when a comic book store <laughs> seller <laughs> owner that's been around one of the most respected well-versed comic book sellers in the industry tells you you got a good deal you got a good deal <laughs> here's another good deal we got right this is, and he had the full set available for this. I was only able to grab one. The last is a five issue miniseries, Gotham Girls. Okay. Number five, and this is Batgirl. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Gotham Girls, number five from 2003. Okay. And it's Paul D. Story, uh, the, uh, the writing, and Jennifer Graves and Rick Burchett is art. And 
Ryan Hughes did the cover okay and it's graded it very fine and we ended up paying a dollar 86 for it it was a good deal it was an okay deal the other ones were going higher okay and it's graded in very fine condition which is good it's a nice cover and some of you if you've been following the live streams i've been doing on twitch i would have shown uh, all the ones up to this point uh and this i don't think i would have shown you this one i don't know if you would have seen this one okay so all the ones up to this point you would have seen in previous live streams i've been doing because when i got them i would i was super happy so i would just show them really quick right here is another book that i picked up and i do have copies of this i got a couple of copies of this but this is one of my favorite marvel characters of all time okay and he had a main role to play in new warriors that came out in the early 1990s and this is amazing spider-man number 22 and it's the first appearance of speedball this guy right here really and he's phenomenal really i really like this character okay so this thing is a near mint condition okay amazing spider-man number 22 came out in 1988 okay and i didn't know this okay and this is speedball the first appearance of this guy and this guy's character's name is robbie uh, baldwin okay and when i picked this up no oh yeah should i tell you the price we picked this up for six dollars and 16 cents us okay so it's a pretty good deal market value fair value maybe a little bit less but fair value this should be worth more just because of speedball in my opinion because i like speedball but i didn't know this this the seller he's sort of a historian as well he knows his comic books has been around for 50, i don't know how many years on it right and he teaches about comic books and stuff this is the first work of steve ditko when he came back to marvel right steve ditko the creator of a lot of original marvel characters amazing spider-man being one of them right for marvel comics and then he left marvel comics and then this is the first professional work he did for marvel comics since he left in the i believe early 70s or late 60s he might have left marvel i can't remember right fantastic and speedball is a character created by uh steve ditko did, did i take down the notes for this I did take down the notes for this. Let me, let me give you a fair bit for this because I didn't know this. As soon as he told me Steve Ditko, I looked further. For me, Steve Ball, uh, Speedball, right? But the cover is Ron Friends, okay? And Joe Rubinstein, okay? It's a 35-page Spider-Man story, Enter Speedball, The Masked Marvel, okay? Drug War Rages, guest starring Daredevil and Speedball, part five of the evolutionary war storyline right plot by tom defalco script by david Mich michelini pencils by mark bagley inks by mike Espo uh, esposito right pretty cool first backup story is he who laughs plot by steve ditko script by Roger Stern, pencils by Steve Ditko, inks by Jack Jackson Geis. Okay, there's a second backup story here, uh, pencils by Ron Lim. Cool, inks by Tom Dezanjini, the one person who was on Jonah Hex, right? And the story was by is by Mark Grunwald. And check this out. Uh, there's a first backup feature which is spider-man and uh, jonah jameson pin up by larry uh, lieber and frank garcia second backup features two-page diagram of peter and mary's jane's bedford towers apartment the third little backup thing i didn't know this third backup feature two unpublished amazing spider-man covers the first by larry lieber and jack abel the second by bob layton I haven't cracked it open to take a look let's take a look okay 
I love Bob Layton, especially from, uh, you know, I really got into Bob Layton from the Valiant days, uh, the from the early 1990s, right? So check this out. Let me show it to you without the glare of the cover of the plastic, right? Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. Guest starring Daredevil, the man without fear. Move over, Spidey. Enter Speedball, the masked Marvel. So let's go. This is a like, beautiful cover. Oh, look at these covers. How come they didn't use these covers? What? Check this out. So the first one is... I want to be careful with this. The first cover is uh, by uh, Larry Lieber and Jack, Jack Abel. Check this out. So that's an unpublished cover for Amazing Spider-Man. So this is after issue 300 because it's got the black costume on, right? And before he ditched the issue. Cool. And here's a Bob Layton one. This one looks beautiful. Look at this. Never unpublished by Larry Lieber and Jack Abel. Yeah. And this is Bob Layton. Look at this. Very cool. Nice. Two unpublished covers by Amazing Spider-Man. That were I wonder if at some point they'll publish these well on a cover uh, maybe not they should maybe they should do it on uh what do you call it on uh, on an omnibus or a compilation or something right near mint near mint okay maybe near mint minus Maybe. That's cool. Love that. Let's see what else we got for you. <laughs> oh, check these ones out. These ones sort of complete, uh, or the early issues anyway. Let me show you this. Here we go. Let's grab these ones. These ones are the human fly, right? And we've got five issues of the human fly, okay? And I have issue number one and two, and I probably have like the first five issues of the series and some other ones. I just didn't, don't think I have all the ones we grabbed here, which is from number three to number seven. So we got the human fly, number one. Uh, he had number one and two up for sale as well, but they went above my budget. And I know I have number one and two already, so I wasn't gonna go too high on those, right? I think they were better grade than what I had, but so be it. So we ended up getting issues number three, four, five, six, and seven of the human flat, okay? And the creators for this were um, Bill uh, Mantello, okay? And the human fly, it's, I didn't notice, uh, but here, let me tell you what I ended up getting these for. This is the human fly number three, from 1977 and is graded in very fine plus and it cost 41 uh, cents US fantastic deal good deal well maybe not a fantastic good deal. I don't know anything less than a dollar is a great deal as far as I'm concerned right uh, written by Bill Man Mantello art by Lee Elias and Don Pearl covered by Dave uh, Cockburn and Joe Sinat and Joe Sinat is huge right Nice cover. Cool. There's a few different artists and writers that worked on this. So I'm going to read you these ones. And that was, uh, did I tell you what grade it was? It was very fine plus. So high grade. Very happy to have. Okay. This is the human fly number four, graded at very fine plus. I believe these are all very fine plus. Got it for 41 cents US, written by um, Bill Mant Mantello, art by Lee Ellis and R Rod uh, Santiago, cover by Sal Boshima and Terry 
Austin and Sal Buscema, we know, we've seen a lot of his work. We've read some of his stuff too, I believe anyway. Get this thing focused. Nice book, 41 cents US. Nice. Here's the human fly number five. Ended up as graded very fine plus again. Ended up getting it for 19 cents US, 25 cents Canadian. Again, it's written by uh, uh, Bill Mon Mon Montalo. Art by Frank Robertson and Rod, Rod uh, Santiago. Cover by Frank Robertson and Joe Sinat again. Nice. 19 cents. That's cool. <laughs> Human fly. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> right? Fun. 1978. Very fine plus. We got it for 93 cents US. Written by Bill uh, Mantello. Art by Frank Robertson and Rod Sterling. Rod Sterling. <laughs> Rod Santiago. Right? <laughs> Covered by Frank Robertson and Frank um, Giocio, Gio, Giocino. No, there's no in there. Giocio. God, I brutalized these names, man. Crazy. 93 cents US. Nice cover. Very fine plus. Human fly number seven. Okay, this is near mint minus graded okay. written by bill Mon montello art by lee ellis and mike esposito cover by alan weiss okay i'm just going to read you just a little bit here okay this is the second human fly the first human fly was appeared in amazing spider-man um I'd be surprised. It says, I think I looked at Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 10, annual number 10. But uh, I think I have an annual number 10. I don't know what we call it, but um, annual number 10. This is the second human fly, okay? The second human fly was a young man of unknown identity who was severely injured during a car crash. After a long hospitalization, including a number of reconstructive surgeries in which much of his skeleton was replaced by steel he took on the masked identity of the human fly as the as the human fly he performed daredevil stunts to benefit various charities special especially those helping children with disabilities that's cool right his activities often drew him into conflict with criminals who were often seeking to rob the charity events at which he performed. Additionally, he drew the attention of Spider-Man who thought he might be the villain of the same name. And the original human fly, I believe, died. So I guess Spider-Man got involved in all this thing. They crossed over because he thought this was the previous human fly coming back. The character, check this out. This was cool when I read this up, right? The character was based on a real life stuntman, Rick uh, Rajat. Okay. The comic book, uh, carried the tagline the wildest superhero ever because he's real okay. and photographs of someone in a human fly costume appeared in the books jim shooter a high-ranking member of marvel's editorial staff at the time of publication okay said in 2007 that the photos were indeed of rajat so i didn't know this it was based on uh, uh a real life character and that's probably that's why they're saying that the tagline there, right? Which says, the wildest superhero ever because he's real. Didn't notice. One of the reasons I love doing comic book hauls, right? Reading things and researching and finding stuff out. Very cool, very cool. The next set of comics are now he had a whole set for these available i ended up grabbing three and this is marvel presents okay and this is marvel presents guardians of the galaxy okay. so this is 
number six marvel presents number six and he had the earlier ones available they were above my budget i couldn't get them okay so uh, the guardians of the galaxy created by stan lee uh arnold drake and roy thomas and roy thomas for me is amazing right nice covers <laughs> so guardians of the galaxy is old school marvel right and it's not just the movies and the crossovers and stuff they've been around for a long time as they, it's like the avengers they change over time and stuff different people join and there's like futuristic guardians of the galaxy and stuff right so marvel pre presents number six 1976 okay fine plus which is nice grade mid grade nice mid grade ended up paying dollar 68 us for it which is a pretty good price cover pencils by rich um rich buckler inks by frank Giacco, Giacio, uh the photographic man script by steve steve gerber gerber pencils by al milgram inks by terry austin for this one okay pretty cool they're pretty intense the guardians of the galaxy i like them i really like the guardians of the galaxy of the relaunch the different team that was around or there was some of the same players uh or the futuristic one that was early 1990s i read it so long ago i barely remember any of it but i know i enjoyed it this is marvel presents number nine okay let me flip this get to the info part of this marvel presents number nine this was very fine near mint high grade like it okay 1977 ended up paying 484 for this us cover by al milgram breaking up um, is death to die is the name of the story right and the stories by steve gerber and mary uh, St uh, Str strinus did the art <laughs> pencils by al uh, al milgram and inks by bob Weah. nice cool this is marvel presents number 10 very nice and 1977 very fine near mint again high grade high grade right very good ended up paying 521 us for this script by roger stern pencils by al Milgram inks by Bob we we sick okay and he had like I said he had the full set up for these and he had number 11 and number 12 up but they went way above my my budget the last we got sirens going on the last uh, sounds of the city sounds of the city the last two issues of the series go for a premium price as should these ones but they go for a premium price because i believe they were a lower print run okay so number 11 and number 12 i had bids up more than what i paid for these ones the last one number 10 will pay 521 for it but it went way above that so that was above my budget let me show you this standalone first appearance this is teen titans the new teen titans annual number two is the first appearance of the vigilante okay now i don't know the vigilante very much i know this one fetches a you know it's not too expensive you can get it on a good price. we got a great <laughs> amazing price right let me tell you what it is this is very fine near mint okay first vigilante and there's multiple characters that have been called vigilante but first vigilante uh first appearance of the second vigilante i believe okay uh 1983 graded very fine near mint ended up paying two dollars and five cents for this right and it's adrian chase and it's created by marv wolfman and george perez two giants in the industry okay and the first appearance of uh the character uh Adrian Chase, I believe, is a new Teen Titans 23, and this is the first time he took on the persona as a vigilante. Okay. 
New Times Animal just portrays the character of the, the, the action line. So, oh yeah, this character's, I'm not following the TV series Arrow, but I believe this character's made an appearance of Arrow. That's what the notes said. Uh, or say, after his initial appearance, the character gained his own ongoing vigilante series, initially written by Wolfman and later included writers such as Alan Moore. I had no idea Alan Moore wrote Vigilante comic book series right and paul uh, cooperberg murder machine first appearance of vigilante off-camera cameo by Mon uh, monitor story by marv wolfman and george perez art by george perez and pablo marcos plus introducing an enigmatic man known as the vigilante who is judge jury and executioner all rolled up into one so this would have been uh, DC's uh, reply to uh, the Punisher, Marvel's Punisher. Right? Very cool, very cool. Now, let me show you this last set of books. They're related. Okay. The first two. This is the courtyard number one. The courtyard number one in near mint condition first edition and these are written by uh, let me read the description for it for both we got number one and number two i'm going to show you the covers independently while we read these right i uh, came out in 2003 okay we ended up getting both of them each one for 19 cents us so 19 cents us and 19 cents us uh 25 cents canadian a pop bag then boarded in near mint condition alan moore story arc horror a pretty good deal right so it's by alan moore and jason burroughs one of the most celebrated writers in the industry alan moore unleashes this timeless tale of psychological horror fbi man aldo Sachs has an amazing service record with the fbi his legendary skills at piercing together the most baffling of cases has gotten him assigned to what what may be his most confusing case yet. This Lovecraft and tale of horror is stunningly illustrated by Jason Burroughs, uh, Bad World Scars, and fully rendered in great tone by Nimbus Studios. So, and that was a description I believe I got from uh, either my comic shop or Wiki. I think it was from my comic shop. So that's fantastic. I haven't read this. I haven't read the. Uh, new alan moore stuff for quite some time this is 2003 so i haven't read this i know that actually i've read some newer alan moore in the last decade anyway fantastic here's number two the cover of number two very cool right and again 25 cents us oh sorry 25 cents canadian 19 cents us And then this is related to the courtyard because it's the same following the same story of the character and these are the special covers they put out now he had the first they had the fourth set for this I got out bit on number one for some reason people just pay extra for number one when I guess it's just the nature of the beast right so this is Alan Moore and jason burroughs neo namacon and these are the ec tribute covers limited to anywhere between 1500 to 2000 right so number one got i got a bit i bit like i don't know what it was like over seven and it, i got a bit right near mint condition it's either limited two different sources were telling me two different things limited to 1500 or 2000 and it follows the same story arc as previously and all three of these are in near mint condition okay and again alan moore and jason burroughs beautiful ec tribute covers right fantastic and the side here is says uh, featuring hp lovecraft alan moore and jason burroughs so it's love lovecraft stories possibly sort of spoof off of them or whatnot right i 
think it's supposed to be original, but it might have backup stories on it or something. I don't know. I haven't read. But the story arc for this is Auxiliary Limited Edition covers by Jason Burroughs, limited to 1500, written by Alan Moore, with art by Jason Burroughs. The story begins. So that was number two. Here's number three. Let me read you what it says here while you watch scene number three. Right? The story begins some years after the chilling events of the courtyard in a world where, where two young and cocky FBI agents are investigating strange and familiar murders. They think they've seen the worst monsters in America, but as they pull up uh, to the maximum security asylum where one Alder Sachs speaks in strange tongues and goes on from there. Okay, the description for it. I believe I grabbed that description from my comic shop. Cool. Nice tribute pieces. 19 cents US. Phenomenal deal. Great deal. Great deal. This cover I really wanted. I bit high on this cover because I really wanted this cover. Okay. So I sacrificed getting number one. I didn't know if it was going to go that much, right? I sacrificed not increasing my bid on number one to be able to make sure I got number four, right? Because number one went first, right? This is number four, and here's the cover for it. Beautiful. This is very EC. I, I might have one EC book at least like this where it's burning and you see the skeleton, right? Beautiful. Both sources said this one only had 1500 print run. Okay. You're getting a reflection, but I don't want to take it out. Not standing up like this, should we? Let's do it. This is our 700th video anniversary, right? Let's take a look at this thing. beautiful beautiful take a look look at that cover nice cover right love it nice 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 that's a beautiful copy wow let's put it back in the pack very nice copy. Near mint. I'd say that one was mint. Maybe after I handled it, <laughs> near mint. And the last book in our comic book haul. And this one, he was like, I can't believe you got it for that price. He was like, wow. Right? And is related to the books and it's neonomicon hardcover alan moore same people alan moore and jason burroughs okay from avatar press near mint okay and it includes it's the hardcover and it includes the courtyard one and two and the neonomicon one two three four so it's it's a compilation of all those right so it's a sort of an omnibus on the story. I don't know if this thing continues or not. Hardcover. Now it's just not, not any regular hardcover. This is signed by the artist, by Jason Burroughs. Okay. And it's got the certificate in there as well. I cracked it open and it's mint condition. It's a beautiful copy. And it's limited to 150. Oh, let me tell you how much we got this for. This baby we picked up for five dollars and 62 cents us right signed hardcover edition of an alan moore story arc okay limited to 150 in near mint condition goodbye goodbye let me show you it's got a little certificate in there of, uh, just shiny beautiful book beautiful book nice artwork nice 
Let me show you the signature too. Here's the, oh my God, it's so tight. Here's a certificate for it, right? So limited to 150, and here's uh, his signature right there. Cool. Very cool. Great price. Glad to have this. Fantastic. Nice, nice, nice. And that's the comic book haul for our 700th live video i'll put this back in the back here let's do this here let's put it back in the back now so we don't accidentally do anything but this is our 700th video anniversary our comic book haul i believe is number 25 okay so out of the 700 videos we have out there's 25 comic book hauls and a whole bunch of comic book videos maybe be readings or discussions or live streams or whatever they might be right. fantastic uh, i hope you enjoy it i love this uh, especially collecting over an extended period of time you're really picky and what you get you're really happy with i am anyway maybe 25 cents 19 cents or the highest one we had here, $28, right? Majority of them being in either $0.25 cents or dollar, two, three, four dollar range, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Great little gift for us, I think, for our 700th video. Um, if you're new here, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is sort of some of the things that we do with comic books and stuff. And we do other things on this channel as well. If you've been here for a while, thanks for sticking around. I hope you're enjoying your ride. It is, uh, it is an amazing ride indeed. Okay, uh, aside from that, uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. We've got a lot lined up for the summer. Uh, and we're in, we're in the summer of 2019 now, kicking into summer of 2019. And we're gonna do comic book readings for sure. Maybe we do comic book buys if we can get some more fantastic, fantastic deals. And for sure, we're gonna do a lot of cooking, a lot of mathematics and a lot of finance and different things that we're going to link up all of it going into the realm of mathematics including the comic book halls okay that's it for now gang and i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now